Hello guys, it's me, Play. In this video, I'll teach you about commands in Discord.py. What I talk about in this video is already outlined in the documentation. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. To begin with, let's talk about command context. All commands must have this. The context contains all the details you need to know about the execution of the command. Things like who invoked the command, what server it was used in, the message of the command itself, and more. If we want to send a message in the same channel we use the command, we can use the ctx.send method, passing in the content we want to send. Now let's talk about converters. Converters are callable objects that convert arguments into a desired format. For example, if you wanted to gather an integer from the user, you can request the argument to be converted to an int using type hints. You can use functions as well, since they are callable objects. Here is an example provided in the documentation. This command takes in some content and returns it in uppercase. The content argument is being converted using the to upper function. This function takes in the argument and returns the desired conversion. Discord.py provides many converters you might find useful. These can all be used as converters. Let's go over error handling. When an error occurs during your command, you probably don't want to pollute your standard output and leave the invoking user clueless as to why the command didn't work. This is where errors come in. We can create a command-specific error handler using the command.error decorator. The error handler takes in the context and the error itself. Then you can gracefully handle the error however you'd like. Sometimes we don't want certain users to use our commands. For example, we might want a purge command that only users with the moderator role could use. We can accomplish this using checks. Checks are simply functions that take in a context parameter and return a bool. Then to register the check, you simply decorate the function you want to check for with commands.check, passing in the check function you created. The isOwner check is so common that the API already provides it for you. Now let's put all of our newfound knowledge together and create a new command. This command will mention a target user n number of times. The function will take in the command context, the member to target, and the number of times we want to ping them. Note that the member argument has discord.member converter. Using this converter, the caller of a command can mention someone as an argument and the API will parse it for us. Now let's loop n times and send a message each time that contains a mention for the targeted member. As you can see, this command works. However, after a few messages, it pauses before sending any more. This is because we cannot send too many requests in a short period of time. To counteract this, we will pause for a second before sending the next message. Import async.io and in the loop use the async.io sleep function to add a pause of one second. Now the messages are sent consistently. Currently, there is no limit to the number of times one can mention a member. So let's create a custom converter that will add a constraint. If you recall, converters are just callable objects. So let's create a function called mention converter. This function needs to take in the argument being converted and it will return the minimum between two values, the argument and whatever you want the max to be. I'll say 10. We also have to convert the argument to an integer for the function to work. By default, the argument is a string. Now instead of using an integer for the converter, we can use the function we just created. And now the command will be limited to 10 mentions. Now if we were to pass in a bad argument, like an invalid mention or a letter for the number argument, we would get an error in the terminal and nothing on Discord. So let's create an error handler for the command. Create a new function that takes in command context and the error. We can just send the error back to the user invoking the command. To register this as an error handler for the command, we need to add a decorator to the function. The name of the function, dot error. Finally, let's only allow the command to work if the invoking user has the mod role. Simply use the commands that has role decorator passing in the name of the role. Now if we try the command, it'll tell us that we need the mod role. And if we give ourselves the mod role, it'll work. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it helpful, make sure to like. And if you want to see more, subscribe.